Today we have a special guest with us to lead us in our worship in singing. Some of you might remember her. Her name is Renee, and she sang and performed together with Kyle Church at a concert at our church a little while ago. Uh, she has kindly recorded some music for us to use in our worship service, and uh, we're going to just jump right into that and worship together with Renee as she guides us in this song. Galatians 5, 22. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Good morning, everyone. Each of these colors represent or mean a different fruit that the Holy Spirit brings to our life. 
when all these different fruits are in your life, it is beautiful. So boys and girls, as you are watching this, think about what God can do in your life and how you can make it more beautiful by following the fruit of the Spirit. Well, it's hard to believe that it's the first Sunday of the month already. We've gone through a month of, of these kind of uh, remote services. And one of the questions that has come to me is, is it really okay to have communion in, in the home and to serve it to one another rather than having a church official serve the bread and the, and the wine to us? And uh, as I'm sure you're aware of and I'm aware of, there are many different uh, traditions throughout church history on how to participate and how to to do this important remembrance of Jesus Christ, this, this uh, communion table. But to answer the question about doing it at home, I think we can know better than to go right back to the historical context of the New Testament itself, the, the backdrop into which uh, these traditions first began. The early church and how they operated and what they did is so vividly described to us in the book of Acts 
and in some of the letters in our New Testament. And in these descriptions we find that the church met primarily in very small groups in homes, probably groups of 10 to 20, maybe 30 people, and they met frequently. From time to time when they had opportunity, they would gather all of these small churches together in a, in a public space and meet that way. But more frequently, they met in the homes. Just take, for example, two scriptures. In Acts chapter 2, verse 46, we read that they worshiped together in the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. And then in Colossians chapter 4, verse 15, Please give my greetings to our brothers and sisters at Laodicea and Nyamph and the church that meets in her home. And so with these verses and others, we know that the early church, the one that was taught by the disciples that were with Jesus Christ himself, uh, met in homes and celebrated the Lord's Supper, remembered him with bread and wine in their homes. It's not possible that a uh, one of the 12 could have been in each of the many homes that was doing this. And so I think we are completely safe to assume that they served this to each other in their homes, whoever was there. So that's what we're going to do this morning once again. We're going to uh, remember our Lord and Savior with the breaking of bread and the drinking of wine all together, though we are in very different places. So at this, at this time, if you haven't already prepared, uh, get yourself some, some bread and something to drink. And again, uh, it doesn't really matter what you get, uh, preferably something made of flour, with flour, but it doesn't have to be something that has yeast in it and has risen. In fact, it's more likely that Jesus and his disciples had unleavened bread, uh, something more akin to a, a soft taco or, or pita bread or something like that. But whatever you have is fine, and if you need to pause the video to get prepared, go ahead and do that, and then come back as we continue together. Today I'd like to use a very old table blessing for our prayer before we break our bread. And this is one that I was taught as a child to actually sing, but I'm not going to sing it for you here today. But it goes like this. Let us pray together. Be present at our table, Lord. Be here and everywhere adored. These mercies bless and grant that we may feast in fellowship with thee. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 13, verse 23 and 24, it says, The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I'd invite you this, this morning or afternoon when you're watching this to, to take a moment as you hold your bread, as you pray, maybe stop the video and pray together around your table. And remember, remember Jesus. And just allow a moment of quiet to, to allow thoughts to come to your mind. Maybe a song will come that reminds you of Jesus or helps you to worship him. Maybe a verse of scripture. Maybe a particular time and place when you felt very close to Jesus. Maybe a teaching. Maybe a conversation. Or something entirely different from what I've mentioned. Just take a moment to think. And remember, and allow those, those memories, even of your memories, to come to mind. And then when you've done that, break the bread together. Each take a piece. And let's eat together in remembrance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'd like to suggest that before you go on, you maybe pause the video again. And this time, with whoever you're with, one or two people or, or a few more, uh, share with one another maybe something that came to mind, a verse, a song, 
a teaching, whatever, whatever kind of thoughts came to mind as you were quiet for a moment, uh, share them with one another. And if you're all alone as you watch this, that doesn't exclude you from this. Uh, we are encouraged to share Jesus Christ with one another. And so if you are alone and you've thought of something, why don't you just write it down and then write someone a note, an email, a text message, give someone a call and just say, you know, I was remembering Jesus this morning and this is what came to mind. And I thought it might be encouraging to you if I shared this little bit of testimony with you. You know, I'll go first. In fact, I don't know what you've been thinking of, but as I was remembering Jesus this morning with this bread, a memory came to mind that goes back to when I lived in Toronto. And uh, this was in the early days of, of uh, relationship with Colleen and I, and we were on a date and had gone to the Art Gallery of Ontario. And we looked at many different paintings and sculptures, and some of them were very beautiful, and some of them I didn't think were very beautiful at all. And most of them had themes of nature and, uh, and all kinds of various themes. Uh, only the very ancient paintings uh, carried religious themes. But we were walking through this one hall and there was a little aclove in between galleries. We were walking past and as we passed, we both turned to look into this aclove and there was a painting that stood floor to ceiling, bigger than life size, and the impact of that painting on Colleen and I was so great that we both involuntarily sat down on the bench behind us. I'm sure if there hadn't been a bench there, we'd have been flat on the floor. And it was a painting of a rock, a solid rock that was just hanging there in the, in the little aclove that filled up the whole space. But out of the rock was coming, stepping out of the rock was Jesus extending his hand towards us. And that's, that image has stuck with me. It was so powerful that, that out of the solidness, the rock, the fortress that is God, the, the flesh and softness and approachableness of Jesus Christ steps forward to, to invite us into God's presence. And that was a, was a powerful experience of Jesus. And I was just remembering that as we were eating this bread together now. And so you could pause the video and share some of your stories. And then when you start it up again, we're going to, uh, we're going to listen to the witness of one of our, our own church members who has pre-recorded a message uh, of encouragement and testimony for us, and we'll continue in our worship service in that way. Good morning, everybody. As I was sitting here thinking and praying about what to share, a lot of things came to my mind. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Today, friends, I believe this to be more true than ever. For many years, I have suffered from depression, anxiety, panic attacks, and PTSD. In this time when a serious pandemic has taken the world by storm where thousands have died, I started feeling down. Don't get me wrong, but the first three weeks were fine. And then it just went down more, more, and more. I would cry every day. I was lost. I was lonely. I was feeling hopeless and somewhat suicidal. After a few days, I contacted some medical professionals to see if I could pinpoint the problem. And there was a list. But after talking to them, I came to the realization that it wasn't the things I enjoyed bringing me down. It was me realizing the things I take for granted I could still do and learn once again to enjoy them. My friends, this pandemic will not last forever, but I do believe it is a setback, perhaps for people to realize that the things they take for granted can be taken away that quickly. You know, such things as spas, hairdressers, barbers, swimming pools, gyms, and the walking track. I know a lot of you out there may not suffer from 
depression, anxiety, panic attacks, PTSD, or any other mental health issues. But, my friends, it is okay. There are supports out there. You just need to find them. I know a lot of people right now, this has been a really, really hard time on them. And, uh, you know, they're wondering, and I'm wondering when things are going to get back to the norm. I absolutely praise the moms who are at home 24-7 with their children, trying to entertain them, trying to, to get them to do things. Um, just, you know, to, to help them get through this where they can't go to the park and they can't go to their friends and they can't hug people because they just don't understand. I believe that this will soon end. I also do believe that my friends, that the one day when we can get back into that church together, there is going to be praise beyond praise and we are going to be singing praises to our God, hugging each other that we have so long for to do, especially Grandma Grace. In closing, I would just like to take this time to say, have you ever stopped to thank those workers who put their lives online for us every day so that we may still have food in our house to feed our families, and that we may still have gas in our cars to get to where we need to be? Firefighters, police, doctors, nurses, etc., as the list goes on. I guess I want to say that we should be thankful. We should be very thankful for those who pray for us, for the families that we have, for the friends that we have and how blessed we are to have each other. Know, my friends, that you are not alone and that you are deeply loved and cared for. First Corinthians 11 verse 25 continues this way. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. If you haven't each got something to drink, uh, pause the video till everyone has a common drink. And then once again, as we remember our Lord and Savior, the blood that he shed on our behalf, take upon himself the sins of the world, including my sins and yours. Let us drink together and remember. I think you can all pray with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.